Hi, Terry here, and welcome to Times Gone Tech. Well, today is the day, range day. Magna Gun of V2, part five. Even though part four didn't make it through, got pulled, we're gonna go ahead with part five anyway. Now, if you're late to this, this series of videos, well, let me explain what's going on here. Let's take this apart here. Back in the medieval Europe, when gunpowder and firearms were first being introduced, tap and die technology did not exist. That wouldn't come along for another couple hundred years back when guns were first introduced. And they really didn't know how to cast larger pieces, like maybe a little bigger than this, in bronze or iron, because even that technology was still in its infancy. Most of the people who were casting were casting small statues or bells. And there's a big difference between a bell and a cannon. And there were very few people in Europe who were even doing that at the time. So medieval gunsmiths came up with a, what you might call a unique solution. They turned to barrel making. And what they did was they would take long, thick iron staves, form them around a wooden mandrel, and then they would hammer on white hot iron hoops around it to hold everything together and take the mandrel out. And what that did was it left them with a long iron tube. Now the problem was, how did they block up the back of that tube? Tap and die technology didn't exist yet. Well, here's what they came up with. They put a frame onto the barrel. There's a little different than mine, but served the same function. And they came up with this removable breech canister. And this contains all the powder and shot and the touch hole, which I'm using fuse. And it would slide up into the back of the barrel, like so. If you get it lined up right. They had a handle on theirs to make it a little easier. And then they would take an iron wedge, like this, tap it in from the side. And the idea was, when this thing fired, when this thing ignited, all that powder was going to try and go in two different directions. One direction was against the breech plug, which was just hammered in from the back. It was just held in with friction. But this wedge was in the way, so it couldn't blow the breech plug out. So the rest of the force then would go forward into the barrel and out the muzzle. That's the theory. Today, I'm going to test it and find out. So, I got my canister loaded, and I'm going to tie it down with some rope. I got a target set up, and we're going to see what it does. Now, this first shot is going to be loaded with a half a charge. That'll be 10 grams of 1F cannon grade powder and 17 double F buckshot. Double F. 17 double aught buckshot. So, let me tie it down. And I got it lined up, I think, pretty well. Now, the whole idea behind this test, I'm not trying to proof it. What I want to do is find out, will the thing shoot or will it blow apart? That's all I'm trying to find out right now. It's more like a, it's a proof of concept, not a proof of the gun itself. So, because, you see, this whole thing is really, from here forward, is held together only with friction. I use the old methods. I heated up these larger pieces of pipe until they were like you know, red hot, and then I hammered in the smaller pipe into it. So this barrel goes about this far into here, butts up against that piece you saw on the cylinder, but it's only the friction of this piece that's all that's holding that in. So is it gonna hold in or is it gonna blow up? That's what we're gonna find out. And for safety's sake, I'm using some slow burning cannon fuse to ignite it with. And I'm going to go hide behind a big ass pine tree.
Well, that worked pretty good. The gun itself appears to have weathered it just fine. No damage whatsoever. Let's have a look at the target. Well, look at that. Very tight shot grouping. All 17 pellets right there. Pretty cool, huh? I think I could raise that up a little bit and I could even pull that back some. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's go up to one more. Let's do a full charge. 20 grams of 1F cannon powder and 17 buckshot pellets. Okay, so far it's looking good. Now that was a half a charge. Everything's looking good and fine. So we got a great shot pattern on the target, which means this thing's probably effective out to three, four times the range I got it set at anyway. Um, that's still got to be determined in the future though. Right now I'm going to take this up to a full charge. So, it's time for the big test. Now, I know, honey, it's, a, it's up to you now. Now, I know everybody wants to see you fail. Everybody wants to watch you explode. But I got faith in you. I believe in you. We spent a lot of time working together, and I know you can do it. It's time to prove your stuff. Take out some bad guys, and Daddy will be right here behind you watching. Why? Ain't you ever seen anybody talk to his gun before? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful. Let's look at the shot pattern. Oh yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen pellets accounted for. All pellets accounted for. How about that? That's a heck of a shot pattern. This thing could take out probably, I don't know, three or four men if it was at like twice the range. Well, folks, after so many failures, with that crappy wood guns, I'm calling Magna Bunk Gun of V2 a resounding success. This thing fired flawlessly. Now, that's only two shots. Hasn't been proven yet, but it's not completely finished yet either. I got a few more little bits and bobs to do to it before I can get it on a stand and then take it out and do some serious proof testing. But proof of concept, A plus, baby, A plus. I knew you could do it. I never doubted you. Not for a second. Uh, <laughs> Magna Gunna V2. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs>